Hey guys, Artosis here, and today we're going to start another match in the uh, Korea vs. China Invitational League. Here we have Bishop, one of the strongest Terran players in the world, is in uh, ASL occasionally, very well respected by everybody in the scene, and his opponent, Fengji, one of the older and stronger Zergs from China. Uh, definitely, we've seen a lot of great games from Fengji on this channel. In fact, a lot of great games from Bishop as well. Uh, I think that this match is going to be Bishop favored, but actually could be a really good match. I think Fengji is a smart player and doesn't only play aggro styles. So I think he has uh, a good a, a good bag of builds. <laughs> I don't want to use that terminology from Shine, but uh, I think he's got a lot of different strategies that he can utilize here against Bishop. Our first map going to be on Butter. And while we wait for this to start, I wanna thank everyone for checking out Artosis Cast. Uh, for the last little bit, we've been doing uh, a lot of my own personal tournament Ascension. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. It is over now. Uh, I think I learned a lot running that and we'll run some more tournaments in the future. Uh, a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed. That's a great thing for you to do right now is hit that subscription button makes me feel real good to see the channel continue to grow and of course a big thanks to everyone who has supported on patreon that's patreon.com forward slash artosis uh yeah i mean we have a lot of a lot of great stuff coming up still uh i have a a great um race survival league that we're gonna start casting pretty soon still have more riss matches still have more korea china invitational uh, new Narok Star League is going to start very shortly. Yeah, there's there's just a ton of great StarCraft on the way. You know, I <laughs> hope that you guys are enjoying that. So, let's talk about these openings a little bit. This is a gas opening with a wall. Oops. Uh, this is a Zergling tight wall right here. So, very easy to do this. The Marines pop out on the inside, by the way, and get something like a quick factory. And this is an incredibly quick factory right there. That was like a 218, 219 factory. So he's going to get a Vulture very quickly. Fengji just going for a standard two hatchery uh, opener at, at the expansion into gas and uh, spawning pool. <clears throat> but he is definitely going to have to get that sunken colony up pretty quickly. It'll be interesting to see how he wants to play against this because he's going to scout and see that there's like not much here and know pretty quickly that this is likely a factory. Uh, now, it's been like... Factory openers have gotten extru... Oh, God. He's mining so much gas. I bet you this is a two-port Wraith opener, which actually has gained a lot of popularity lately. Uh, and, in fact, I was going to mention that 111 openers, you know, uh, the Barracks Factory Starport, those have become extremely popular uh, as well. Um, it's kind of interesting to see the, the metagames change around a whole lot within the pro scene. Now... It is the double starport build. Not a big surprise there. He puts them down here because they're going to rally more quickly towards that main base of Fengji. And this has... It's kind of funny because I'm never really quite sure what's going to happen with these two starport builds. Because they pop up from time to time. Normally, it's just considered like a one-off cheese that you'll mix in just very occasionally. But... It's really gained a lot of popularity and has been mapped out a lot better than it ever has been before. Like, you go for the wraiths, and the timing is just right that you normally get down there, and you kill some overlords, and you kill several drones with those wraiths. Uh, and then you generally go into, like, two barracks marine medic and keep pressure on. A lot of pros are using these types of builds. Uh, by the way, the vulture did die, but scouts the spire, so that's very useful. Um, because... Again, these builds have become popular enough that some pros now are actually opening with Hydralisk Dens when they see that it is some sort of tech build as opposed to an expansion. Uh, so we've actually seen like a lot of early game Hydras emerging in the pro scene. So really interesting to see this. And of course, uh, not surprisingly, Fengji is going to have his own take. Evolution Chamber, and he's going to have Double Spore. Now... Spores are like the best anti-air structure in the game. They absolutely will rail wraiths, but that doesn't mean you can't get damage on the edges, right? Like everything in this area, you could go after the spire possibly. We don't know. 
Uh, gets in here, and he's going to get at least one drone, but the spore is about to finish. This spore is already done. Uh, obviously, he can hunt overlords and things like that, but he's not going to deal nearly as much damage to the economy as we're used to, right? Because normally, the you see the spire timing as opposed to the wraith timing? The spores are already up, so he's only killed one drone. Normally, it's like you get four or five drones here. So kind of an interesting difference. He is going after that spire. Going to put some damage on the overlords. The thing is, you need to keep these overlords soft if you want to get the spire. Because you're going to have to utilize cloak and being at, like, full distance from the spire firing at it, most likely. Now, carapace, flyer carapace started here for Fengji. So really getting ready for that battle. Sometimes, if they go mass mutalisks, I have seen games where this turns into Valkyrie Wraith. Uh, not as often on a map like this, though. I think it's much more likely we're going to see the Academy go up, uh, you know, and go into a second barracks, that type of thing I was mentioning before. Now, Cloak is coming. Six Scourge flew up the map. Don't know if they're going to get any connections. We'll see. Fly in and, oh, God, <laughs> almost get one. But we'll turn around. The Wraith's trying to chase him down for a kill. Ooh, and they're going to get one of them at least. Ooh, quick turn and great micro there from Bishop. So going to fly back. He does need to repair a little bit more there. You want to make sure you're keeping Wraiths at very good health. And that's because you only have 120 uh, hit points. And Scourge do 110 damage. So basically, if your Wraiths take like a Muta hit and one Glaive bounce... They will die to one Scourge, which is absolutely not what you want. Uh, here, it's like, okay, if this takes a Muta hit, it's going to die instantly to one Scourge. Got to be careful about that. Now, look at this. Oh, my God. I didn't notice this. I like this. I like watching some of these older players play who have these types of takes, okay? Fengji putting down the Spore next to the Spire. The Spire had already taken about half damage. Like, half of its health was gone. And the fact that he looked at that and said, you know what? He's coming back for this. I'm not screwing around with that. We're putting down a spore. Really like the idea. Now, some great micro here from Bishop, as you can see. Really good micro. Fengji having a hard time. He is getting Overlord's speed. That's almost done. Now, Wraiths and Mutas are both faster than Overlords with speed. So even though you get it, it doesn't mean that Cloak is fully countered. Uh, you can kind of micro out of the range of vision and continue to do moves like this. But this is some great micro from Bishop. Doing a fantastic job. He's almost killed that sunken colony. He wants to be able to bring his Marines down. Don't know if that's going to be something that's going to work out for him. We'll see. I feel like he should target it and just get those Marines in. But I guess with the second sunken making, that's not going to be doable. Uh, the the Muta, or uh, rather, the uh, Marines are still useful here. Like, if the Mutas start to chase, the Marines can kind of cover for a moment. Much better to lose the Marines than to lose any Wraiths. Uh, now, the Mutalist count has gotten pretty darn good. He's about to have that plus one Carapace, which is going to be a big deal, right? Wraiths do a double shot. So that's going to reduce the damage uh, by two from each Wraith. Uh, definitely a big deal. Muta's flying up the map. Overlord's falling by, and you can see that they are significantly slower. You do have to bring a bunch of them. And you have to be very careful because, you know, Terran players that do this Wraith build, they're very good at staying out of Overlord sight range, right? And if the Overlords come too close, when the Mutas have to retreat against the heavy damage because it is a back and forth, then you start doing volleys on the Overlords. And obviously, they don't have any defense <laughs> against that. Now, plus one flyer attack is on the way here for Fengji. Doing some heavy micro at the wall. By the way, this is going into three barracks instead of the two I was talking about. And, uh, you know, basically the same idea. Going to go more heavily into that bio play. And honestly, he almost has enough wraiths. Like, you don't want to get more than 11 wraiths. There's literally no point to it. Uh, 11 is going to fit in a group with this trapped SCV and allow you to keep them stacked and microable. Because they have to be microed heavily here. And as long as you're doing that, like, that's... That's it. That's all you need as far as the wraiths go. Like, going 13 wraiths or something it makes no sense. Like, you don't want two control groups there. You're not going to be able to keep them stacked. It's too much micro. It's too much money, right? You want to start using that gas on other things, like maybe a plus one upgrade eventually. We don't really see an eBay, but that's okay. You know, he's getting stim. He's going to need range. He needs to make medics, that type of thing. But still, Fengji just continuously making the mutalisks. 
Bishop is back in his base, uh, kind of turtling at the moment. And you can see that, like, he's had to make so many colonies. Look at this, four drones on the main. I mean, uh, in the natural, and not that many more uh, in the main base. So it's not a big economy, even though it's two base against one base. Honestly, there's just way more SCVs mining. In fact, like, well, I guess because of the spread of the mineral patches, you have more efficiency for Zerg here. But really, the mining is not that far off from Terran, other than the gas. It is twice as much gas coming in. But the Marines only cost minerals, right? So you're still going to be all right fighting against that many mutas that are coming out. Even though he can make twice as many mutas as you can make wraiths. Uh, you know, the, the wraiths supported by the Marines are a whole different story. So Bishop getting into range. I think that's what we're waiting for for his attack. Nice little counter comes up from Fengshi. Kills off that depot. Loses a couple of mutas in the meantime. He is dealing some damage to the wraiths, which, by the way, we're at 10. He, I mean, he might just sit there, too. You never know. You don't have to get 11. I'm just saying you don't want more than a group of wraiths. Overlord's moving over to the side, getting ready for these mutas to fly in. The uh, eBay is being made. Now, the amount of mutas that are out and their upgrades mean turrets alone aren't really going to do very much. Just want to throw that out there. So when he leaves, counterattacks really can be an issue. And you can see that little dance back and forth I was talking about, right? The Wraiths immediately would target an Overlord if those Mutas uh, have to jump back. And by the way, one of the big things, Wraiths' anti-air attack does have higher range than the Mutalisk attack. Uh, Mutalisk attack is actually a very short range attack. I don't even remember. I think it's like range four or something. Uh, it's like, it's, it's quite short. So... You know, that's that's one of the ways that you're kind of trying to out micro, but the mutas are so much better that they can kind of take the extra shots and then fly forward. And as soon as they start getting volleys, wraiths begin to explode. Now, the command center is being made. We're down to seven wraiths right now. If you end up losing all the wraiths, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Like, you actually do need them as an anti-air here. The, the marines alone with no upgrades, like, yeah, stim and range... But they don't have plus one yet. And these mutas are 1-1 one, one already with plus two carapace on the way, which is kind of insane. Those are great, great upgrades there for Fengji. Now, science facility coming up. He is getting ready for that expansion. Looking back at the home of Fengji, he's getting into a Lurker Tech, making yet another sunken. So being very careful about the possibility of being busted and actually has a reasonable economy now. Right? We have eight drones at the natural, so he has uh, just a little bit more than one per patch. And that's where, like, Zerg actually starts getting the economy that they need. Now, a little bit of counter harassment coming down. I actually hadn't expected this. He flies across the map with six rates. That is enough to one-shot drones. So, can just kind of fly in and get quite a bit. And does a lot of damage there. Like, any drones you're killing right now is extremely painful for Fengji. He's very, very low economy-wise. Now, a little counterattack with these Mutalisks. The Marines doing their best to hold on. There are a few turrets that are being added in. Definitely should pull back, and we see him doing that as well. We're down to 12 drones. Uh, the, the Wraiths have taken a beating, so they're going to go home. You don't want them to start getting one-shotted uh, one from those spores. And, of course, if you go below the five, then uh, you're not going to be able to uh, one-shot drones. Six is really what you want, right? Because 5 times 8 is 40, so they all have to basically hit at the same instant with 5 to kill off a drone. Uh, drones have... Zerg units have an instant heal, basically. As soon as they get hit, as soon as they go below full health, they do their one point of heal. Whereas Protoss takes a little bit, right? So that's... It's, like, just an important thing to mention. It, it really changes things. That's why, for instance, if you see Vulture Harass against drones, you always see three Vultures instead of two because they get that instant heal. So if you can't line up the shots perfectly to land at the same time, which it is doable, but it's hard, uh, then, yeah, it, it takes it takes those additional shots. So that's why you're aiming to keep six wraiths. Doesn't want to lose any of them. Uh, brings them back. I'm sure he'll repair those right up now. Uh, having to re-land his starport. Like, a lot of damage has been done by these mutas. Coming in, going after a turret. Going to get two of them, in fact. Going to fly out now. Lurker is going to be on the way. First Lurker is already out. In fact, a Lurker going across the map. Oh my god. Are we going to see hold position Lurker in the natural? That would be kind of insane. There is a science vessel on the way. 
Okay, he's okay. He's not gonna stack, or he is gonna stack. Okay, backs him up. The marine actually sees them. So that's an important moment that he sees that those are there. But also, if you stack them here, and the vessel comes out when you try to unburrow, they're gonna get stuck on each other and both die. So I like that he's spreading them right now. He's just utilizing this as a slight containment. Coming out through this choke into these lurkers, incredibly hard with this army. He does get a siege tank. Dude, this is crazy. He even went double comsat in his main base. What a wild and different game that we have right now. Some nice micros still going down. He has healed the race a little bit, but they're still pretty bruised. You know, every mineral, every gas, very important for Bishop at the moment. Now, he's going to have a couple tanks with siege mode. So he is going to be able to push out and take his natural base. Very, very important stuff. Ends up losing a wraith right there. Still a lot of mutas out here, and they do have one, two upgrades, which is kind of insane. This is like much heavier mutalist upgrades than uh, you almost ever see in any matchup. So, very cool. These are definitely battle mutas at this point. They have two more upgrades in the Marines, so they actually can fight really well. But they are, most of them, quite damaged, so he has to be careful about that. Now, Bishop has got his natural expansion basically under control. He can float that command center out there very, very soon. Ooh, a great irradiate. Oh, my God. What a good irradiate. Ends up killing three mutalisks with it. Uh, but, yeah, as he takes up this natural expansion, Feng Shi is still just on two base. Now, he's actually adding a lot of Hydras. It looks like he's going to go Hydra Lurker. Really wasn't expected. He does have that plus one Carapace already, which is pretty impressive. And he has range for the uh, Hydras coming up right now. So we're going to see if like a Hydra Lurker composition is going to be able to fight against this basically one base Terran. Look, his mineral patches are going just as he's going to land this uh, natural expansion. Again, what an insane game number one between these two. Really hard to say who's going to end up winning. I do feel like Bishop has the advantage here. If Fengji was on three bases, I'd be happy with his spot. But I think, like, you know, it, he hasn't had that many drones the entire time. Oh, God. The Irradiate's starting to really pay huge dividends. And, you know, Bishop has had a uh, good enough SCV count this entire time. His saturation's been amazing. So right now, a lot of Hydras, a lot of Lurkers. There is a possibility here. If you catch Bishop moving out, that will be a giant issue. Like, if basically the tanks need to be zoned away from everything so they get their damaging. Because the bio alone doesn't beat this. So let's see, as he tries to come out, what this is going to look like. Oh, the siege tanks walk forward. What? Fengji gets one. He sacrifices a lot of mutas to get it. So definitely not as like how he wanted that to go down. <laughs> but he does get a siege shank, which is a pretty valuable pickoff at this moment. All right, siege is up. And I think this is good for Bishop. Ooh, I don't think so, Fengji. Yeah, Fengji sees the setup and turns right around. He's going to go ahead and lose multiple units here. Uh, two lurkers fall. I think we heard a hydra death there as well. The cloaked wraiths actually can have some real value here as well. There's no overlords right in in the area. It looks like they're going to fly across, find a little bit to do as well. And the thing for Bishop here is Fengji is threatening a counterattack. He's kind of got Bishop pinned in his base. You can see Bishop making a secondary bunker. Uh, I think that this is like him saying, okay, I want to move out and I need to slow an, an incoming counterattack. Because the, basically the army is so close that if he runs up and shuts down the natural expansion, that's no more mining for Bishop, and then he can just bleed this army out. So Bishop has to make sure he does not lose this base, but he also needs to push before Fengji gets everything he wants. He's got Hive on the way. If you get into uh, Defilers here, I think this game turns on its head very, very quickly. Wraith still finding value somehow. Look at this. 13 kills, 4 kills, 4 kills, 2 kills. <laughs> That's a lot of the remaining Wraiths. And don't forget, we had a lot more of this game as well. He's probably lost like 8, 9 Wraiths this game. 
So it looks like that third base, definitely something Bishop is thinking about taking. We don't have constant unit production. He actually gets supply blocked. It's such a weird game that the flow of depots is very different. Normally, you just make nonstop depots, but in a game like this, you can't because you're on one base for most of it. Uh, so kind of funny to see that. Some great irradiates going down in some of these lurkers. Reducing that lurker count slightly is incredibly useful here. Really going to make it so that he doesn't have the overwhelming mass to come up and just obliterate your entire army. You know, in a situation like this, a lot of times you'll burrow right next to everything. And he tries it a little bit. Picks off a couple vessels, which is good. Loses three lurkers and two hydras to do it, though. Not a great trade. Fengji on the ropes. Bishop coming in. This is definitely a push that could kill. The lurkers are so out of position. I don't know what happened there. Was that a misclick? Was he gonna? Was he thinking about running around? I'm not entirely sure. But this position not looking very good for his army. Oh god! And one of the lurkers is in range of the sea chain. Gonna bring the race up. I think we're getting to the end here. Honestly. Fengji just does not have very much. And against the Siege Tank and Bioforce, it's so hard. Consume is not quite ready yet. Oh, God. Bishop stims and runs into three Lurkers. So actually loses a lot. But he still has the core of his army, which is what he needs. We might have a flank come in. Consume is about halfway done. If he already had Consume, this turns into a real interesting game. Maybe he can... Maybe he stalls out because of the amount of sunken colonies. That is a possibility. And we do have a flank that's going to be coming in, I believe. Look at this. Moves up behind. I don't know, man. It, is he going for a counterattack? Bishop coming up with some more units. Going to go ahead, bro. these lurkers, I think. And that will definitely slow that down. Going to have to utilize scans. He does have a vessel up here still. Consume almost done. Oh, the irradiate hits the defiler before he can get a dark swarm down. Oh, man. It looks like Bishop may just push this down in time. He gets the Dark Swarm up, though. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe there is a chance here for Bishop to get pushed back for Fengji to regain his footing in this game. Honestly, you look at the worker count. It's uh, Bishop's economy is not that great, right? He's basically mining on one base. He is floating over to another command center, but doesn't even have the SCVs to saturate both bases. In the meantime, Fengji's third base, which is incredibly important right now as his other geysers are going to be depleted very shortly, is going to be taken out, it looks like. So this is going very quickly now into the direction of Bishop. Killing that base is absolutely crucial. So even though Fengji holds on, main geyser depleted, secondary geyser has a minute and 20 seconds left of mining full gas. So his gas is almost completely gone at this point. We're going to see many more hydras or lings and some defilers coming out basically he just doesn't have much gas to keep this going all right eating what he can with the defiler looks like he's gonna try to take a new third base over here like okay so right now this is such a big army and the fact that he's going mines mines are perfect here fire bats are perfect here as you know it's gonna become more ling heavy you notice the production tab you see a ton of zerglings being made Well, Fengji, this is your one chance, I think. But this army here is definitely too small. Maybe with a, a, a Dark Swarm, something could be done. Yeah, Stims up, gets on top of some of these units. Great upgrades by now, by the way. 2-1, uh, playing against just two Carapace. And I think that's it. I think we're about to see GG here as Fengji has half the supply of Bishop. A really well-fought game, honestly. Bishop keeping his patience. You know, that's it's a hard position to play from. And Fengji trying to make the most of it, but just couldn't get one good engagement. Bishop a bit too careful with his siege tanks. And now with the mines setting up, the siege tanks spread, the bio with good upgrades, a good amount of irradiates ready as well. There's just nothing left here. He's got like a couple dark swarms left coming up. But even so, you can kind of unburrow, move back. Yeah, it looks like one uh, will get down, and the fire bat will be enough to, to delete it. Even D matrixes, which is kind of funny because you could irradiate as well. Uh, either one ends up working there. Uh, but yeah, he is breaking through the last couple units here. Dark Storm goes down. 
And I tell you what, if this game is indicative of what this series is going to look like, which it's not always, you know, game one, you never really know what you're going to get uh, when a couple players that you don't see play each other very often go at it. But a very excellent game number one, you know, going up to about 25 minutes. I, I guess the game was pretty over two minutes ago, but GG, Bishop leads 1-0.